Hi, I'm Mark Vizina. I'm the product manager for the Vortex Studio simulation platform. Today, I'd like to take you on a quick tour of the Vortex Studio interface. So let's get started. Here, we're looking at the Vortex scene file, which is a fairly standard example of the uh, Vortex interface layout. If we uh, look at the whole thing, we've got the viewport in the middle and panels on the left and the right hand side. Now, these panels can be moved and uh, placed at different uh, location, even on a separate screen, if you want to. At the top of the screen, on the left hand side, you have the home button where you create, uh, when you can create files and also access the recently created file list. Next to it, you have the save button along with the save options, the undo and redo button along with the history. Then uh, in the middle, you usually will find a series of tabs, which are all your open file. Now, in this case, we only have the one scene open, so there's only one tab. On the right hand side, you have the panel selection button, which allows you to display additional panels on the screen. For example, the material table where you can change the uh, contact property of uh, material in your scene. Now, in the middle of the screen, this is the current default configuration of the interface. Now, you have got a, a toolbox for simulation object, the configuration panel, the explorer panel, and the property panel on the right. The toolbox panel contains your various simulation objects. Using them is as simply as selecting the required object and drag and dropping it into the scene. The configuration panel allows you to create multiple variants of the same scene or mechanism without having to have a separate file. For example, here if I unselect this, I move to the default configuration with a spreader and no truck. It's as simple as clicking on the button to see the changes that have been made to the scene to add the truck to the scene. The explorer panel shows a hierarchy of the various objects in your scene or your mechanism. Now you can open the folder to access additional objects. You can also uh, drag and drop object into a new folder or new position, uh, whatever is best for your workflow. The property panel is used to examine the various value associated with each simulation object. For example, here I'm looking at the property of the sky dome and I can modify the, uh, the cloud cover, for example, simply by changing a single parameter. The bar at the bottom of the screen contains additional interface and control for the simulation. For example, if I add a connection container to my scene, I'll have it displayed as an additional tab down here and I can go back to 3D view at any time that I want. In the middle of the lower bar, there are the simulation control. Step-by-step -step simulation, simulate, also known as test, and you also have a stop button. When in use, the uh, simulation can also be paused and restarted. On the right hand side, you have a number of values that are displayed while the simulation is active. You can control which one are displayed by simply right clicking on the bar and checking or unchecking the box, for example, such as this. You also have access to a plotter button, which displays a plotter. You can drag and drop uh, values to it and then uh, export the result to a CSV file. The mechanism file is very similar to the scene file. The only difference is that there's a few options that are not available depending on the nature of the uh, file level. So in this example, the mechanism has the vehicle system where you can use it to build cranes or any types of vehicle. The assembly file is a bit simpler in terms of layout and interface. It only contains basics, such as allowing you to create empty parts and collision rules, and constraint, which allow you to attach part together. But otherwise, it works the same as the scene or mechanism file with an explorer panel and a property panel that is used to display the property of the object that you have highlighted. Finally, we have the, uh, the part file interface, which again has panels with an explorer and a property panel. This one has the various collision geometry that you can apply to an object, and you can again drag, drag and drop into the scene and then move them as required. And again, for each uh, collision geometry, the property panel will give you the, uh, the material, whether it's enabled or not, and at the part level, you can control additional parameter and geometry. 
The final interface layout that I want to show you today is the one for the graphic gallery file type. It's very similar again. This time the toolbox contains objects that are directly related to uh, 3D modeling, which is such as the texture of the material or the graphic nodes. The main difference that you'll notice is that there's no simulation bar at the bottom of the screen and there's additional control up here, which is the time of day control, which is allow you to uh, preview your model under various lighting condition. This concludes our tour, our quick tour of the Vortex Studio interface. Remember that most actions are accomplished either through drag and dropping or by right clicking on the viewport or an object. If you get stuck at any point, press F1 to access the online documentation, or just go on our online forum to ask the community for help. Thank you, and have a great day.